All right, peace and blessings, peace and blessings. Assalamu alaikum, shalawan. Thank you for taking the time out to watch this video today. And uh, so today, I still got to upload the video that I did yesterday morning. Um, but this morning, I did a video a few years back. A message from fathers to sons and it was a very good message of course YouTube deleted it and um, so today I'm going to do another one father to son things we tell our young men and it's really applicable to our young girls. It's applicable to all of us. But last night I was talking to my oldest and I could tell that he didn't like his present circumstances, his present condition. And you know, when you're dealing with your children, and as they get older, and according to this world standards, you know, consider themselves to be grown. Just because the world says you're grown at 18, that don't necessarily really mean that you're grown. And we have to be able to understand that very key important thing. It's not your age that makes you grown. It is what do you do? It is your thinking, how you process inf information. It is your behavior. These are the things that go into being grown. And a lot of our children that are quote unquote 18 and over, they're still children. They're not grown. And some of us, you may be 60 years old. Damn it, you're not grown. Look at your behavior. You ain't grown. You may grow in age. But in the mind, you ain't grown. You ain't grown. I know some people 55, 60 years old. They ain't grown. You may be grown in the white man's world, but in the world to come, in God's world, you ain't grown. You ain't grown. Where are you in the understanding of the time and what must be done? Where's the proof of you being grown? No, you growing. You're growing into your proper self should be. Some of our people once they reach a the certain position, they're dead. They're not growing into who they should be. They're satisfied with what they have. They're satisfied with their position. And in their satisfaction equals their death. In their satisfaction equals 
their death. It's so easy for you to abort the life that our God desires for you. It's so easy for you to abort that life because you don't want to struggle with nothing. You don't want to struggle with the pace of self-development. You want to see things in your line of sight and not see things as they should be seen. I had a jackass tell me one day, you ought to take your wife's view on how she sees things. Take her view. I'm supposed to take her view over God's view? If I know his will, I'm supposed to take her view over his will and say I'm the head? The hell is wrong with you? Notice when Adam ate the fruit or Eve ate the fruit from the tree, Nothing changed when Eve ate it. Nothing changed when she ate it. It only changed once Adam ate the fruit. Then the change came. Why? Why is it that the change came, the fall came, not when Eve ate it, but when Adam ate it? Because God gave the instruction to the man gave the responsibility to the man. So once he ate, then the fall began. You know God's will. Man, look here, we know God's will. And you're gonna punk because your wife don't want to accept his will, even for her damnable life. So you reject truth. You reject God to be comfortable in your own death. Is this the thing that we're supposed to do? This is how we're supposed to behave? No. No, that ain't how it works. You know God's will. You got a responsibility and a duty to carry it out. To obey it for your benefit and hers. But if you're a weak thing, that you crumble. How are you going to grow in your godhood? Because she weak? Then you supposed to become weaker? You're not supposed to pull her up to the standard. You misunderstand the growth in life. You misunderstand the stages of life we go through stage after stage until we meet our eventual perfection. But you don't want to struggle in that process. You want everything cookie cutter and it comes out easy and smooth. That ain't going to happen. It don't work that way. But you want it to work that way to suit what? to suit your own needs, your own selfish desires, your own weakness. Because you don't want to change. You don't want to grow up. You don't want to grow into what the God has desired for you. 
You would rather forsake it and be a, a no good nigga. Because you, you've exchanged life for death. You've exchanged life for death. And this is something that you got to understand. You better understand it. Because this is real life. You better understand it. And stop playing. This world is a trap. They sit around and set many traps for you. Especially the black man. Many traps. Because the black man, they understand, will be the one to challenge them for authority. Will challenge them for rulership. Once they wake up to the knowledge of self and the knowledge of who the enemy is, you will challenge. That's why every uh, uh, trap is set against the black man to divide the black man and the black woman because the black woman is his support, is his power base. But when they're able to cut that connection, Where are you going? And some of our women are so, so ignorant to what this new reality got to look like. It's going to be birthed through you. Through you. But you got to clean up here. You got to clean up here. But you don't want to change. You don't want to clean up, but you talk like you do, but there's no action that follow it. That's death. That's death. That's why the scriptures say, come out of her, my people. If you ain't God's people, then stay. Stay in the in the debauchery. Stay in the evil and the wickedness that you do. Stay. Because you're not our God's people then. And every trap that is laid, you can defeat. You can defeat. First of all, you got to want to defeat it. You have to want to defeat it. I told my son, I said, look here, boy. Just like the prodigal son in the Bible, you're in that same similar situation. Your brothers and sisters, they stay under what they were taught. They operate within the rules of what they've been taught in their lifestyle. But you, you wanted your inheritance and you wanted to be free now. You wanted to be able to do your will now. So you left your father's house and you went out in the world and you're shaking and you're partying and you're drinking and you're having a good time. Not knowing a famine is coming. Not knowing death is coming. Not knowing destruction is coming. Because you're having a feel good time. You didn't think you was going to have to pay for that? You hanging, you dancing, you chilling, you drinking, you doing anything that you desire to do. Then when that famine arose, and now you out there dealing with the hogs, knowing you're not supposed to be doing that. And then you think, oh 
man, I can't eat. I got to eat this slop. What? This is what I got to feed my brain? This more foolishness and it's getting me in trouble after trouble? This is what I'm feeding myself? Because there's a famine for information. There's a famine for knowledge. There's a famine for, for food. There's a famine for, for clean, good stuff to drink. There's a famine for, for real love because what you thought was love wasn't love at all. A famine arose. There's a famine. No love. No food, physical food. No food, spiritual food. Nothing to feed your mind, to feed your intellect. The famine. And you see him. Failure after failure. And you think. When I was in my father's house. I had to deal with none of this. Look at my reality. I think. I will return. To my father's house. I pray that he will allow me in because this is for the birds. I want to go home as a servant. I'll serve. That's better than being out here. And the prodigal son went on his journey to go back home to his father's house to live under that order that he rebelled from yeah you left the father's house you left the house of the most high to go out in this wicked world and be all that you could never be in the father's house. You could never be a bum in the father's house. You could never be a nigga in the father's house. You could never be unloved in the father's house. You can never be unwanted or uh, disrespected in the Father's house. There's love, there's equality in the Father's house. But you reject the Father for the enemy's world. And you're rolling around with Satan saying you got you having a good time. You exchange life for death and expect to be blessed, expect to come out clean on the other side when you reject truth and you, you give your life, your life energy, your life forces over to that which is a lie and you've eaten the lie. And because you have eaten the lies, you become the lie and you spread lies because that's what you have become now. You've thrown away the truth to embrace that which is death itself. And now you have to have the understanding of I got to get up from here. Now it's going to take strength and determination to get up. What did we speak about earlier? We spoke about when Job was, was complaining to God down there in the sand. 
And the God told him, brace yourself and talk to me like a man. Get up and be clean. We got to understand our responsibility. I got a responsibility to you. You got a responsibility to me. But are we keeping our responsibility to each other? See, where there's love, there's duty, there's responsibility. But when you want to remain a part of a dying world, you abandon your responsibility. You don't care about no responsibility. Because you're too caught up in the life of a liar. You're too caught up in a life that is death itself. But you thinking you having a good life. This is the day that all of that foolishness ceases. You want life? You want life more abundantly? Make your way back to the Father's house. So I told my son, I said, look here, man. You, if you want to leave your present situation, then you go tell them people you want your freedom because you don't have authority over me. I said, you remember how I got out the military, what I had to do. I was more committed than them. And nobody that, that, that understood my situation could understand what I took as a solution. They say, oh man, that nigga's crazy. What? Did you see reason how they came in here? See, when, when you don't know our God and his desire for you, you won't fathom doing big things. You won't fathom doing the right thing because fear keeps you in check. That's why the scripture says, I, God speaking, I did not give you the spirit of fear, but of love and a sound mind. So since the God didn't give you the spirit of fear, how did you get it? How did you get it so much so that you've given your life's authority over to the enemies of God? How did you give that over to them? You got to understand that there's declarations that you got to make. And you got to keep it and be real with it. We have people that give declarations every day. They go down to the courthouse and, yep, I'm going to love this woman, this man, till death do us part. But when you don't get your way, oh shit, I'm tired of this nigga. I'm tired of this woman. Why? Why you don't want to keep your word? Because your word never meant anything. It never meant anything. Oh, you the last person I'm going to be with. You this, you, you liar. And you're so comfortable in your life. Because that's the life that you live. That's the life that you want. You don't want to struggle. But as a sperm, you struggled when you was emitted into your mother and you was going upstream. 
that was an upstream struggle. But you made it. You were determined to make it. So you got to be determined to rise up out of that condition. You can do it. You can do it. If I did it. It ain't got no federal record, no state record, no city record. You can do it. My determination was freedom or death. Your determination has to be the same. Because when you understand that, that, that the enemies of God, they're not God. But you see them as that. The man in the Bible, how do you see men? Oh, I see them as trees. Well, what does the tree do? The tree helps to create the oxygen so that you can breathe. So you see the enemies of God as trees. So you're getting your, your, your life force, you're getting your, your, your air, your oxygen to breathe through them. That's why I told you the very first video that YouTube ever took down of mine because I was teaching you to cut, to cut the umbilical cord from this enemy because you're feeding from them. And I said, hook your umbilical cord up to our God. That was a perfect message. And YouTube deleted it. And YouTube deleted it. Why? Because what I'm saying is the truth. But they don't want you to understand what I'm saying. You look at all these negative videos, Maurice Muhammad this, Maurice Muhammad that, and you report every last one of them that go against the community standards. And they're never taken down. They're never taken down. The, cha the channel never gets a strike. So they're doing the will of the enemy to just try to destroy my character. To try to stop you from connecting with your brother. Why? It ain't because I hate you. It's because I love you and I'm willing to tell the truth. And you'll sit there and you'll listen to your brother. And you'll change your ways. And the enemy don't want you to change your ways. They want you to stay locked in. So you'll be their nigga. I want you to grow into your godhood like I'm growing into mine. Like I'm growing into mine. Yeah, there's been pain. There's been struggle. There's been difficulty. There's been hurt. I done been through a lot of shit. And so have you. But we don't give up. We don't punk out. We go through the pain. Because there's something there for us on the other side. Go after your crown. Don't let things stop you because of fear. Fuck it. Handle your business. Do what you got to do. You got the strength all up in you. Now live it. Carry it out. And you make it happen. Stop playing with yourself. Stop aborting the life that our God come to give you. Be strong and firm in rejecting this, this world's life and accepting the way of 
our God and his purpose for our lives. The enemy has run amok with your life. Take it back. You kill the nigga in you, I'm going to kill the nigga in me. And our God will reign supreme. We are black first. Today, tomorrow, and forever. Love you, family. Peace and blessings. Assalamu alaikum. Shalom.